Hey, greetings everyone. Welcome back. Today we're going to have a little bit of fun, or at least I hope to. I'm going to have some fun. I'm going to work my way through a CTF I found on Vulnhub, and it's going to help us understand a little more about Metasploit. If you've never messed with Metasploit before, this is a great video for you because I'm just going to kind of show you some of the basics behind that, show you what that's going to look like, and how that can be useful for if you're trying to do something like a CTF or a penetration test for that matter, it very well may be the very key thing that can help you get your way into a machine. It's a great tool and it's got a lot of functionality to it, but I just want to kind of give you your first step, your first look into working with Metasploit if you've never done that before. Now, if that sounds cool, make sure you smash that subscribe button, like notification bell, all that other good stuff. And uh, so that you can make sure that if I put up videos like this that you like, that you're going to be able to see them. And don't forget to comment. I love comments. So add a comment below. If you've worked with Metasploit, go, wow, I love Metasploit. Uh, if you've worked it before and you're like, ah, it's kind of a cheater's way out, that's fine too. I want all different perspectives, all different experiences to come together and kind of learn from each other. That's the whole idea of this channel. So adding to the conversation is very, very welcome. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let me jump into my box here, show the screen. Here's my collie box. I've got this. Uh, it is called Drifting Blues. That is the name, or and it is number seven in the series. Got that from Vulnhub. You can see that here. Here is the, uh, I'll add the uh, URL link in the description below so you guys can grab that. But Drifting Blues number seven. It is flagged as difficulty of easy or, or labeled as easy. I guess that there is some some truth to that, but maybe if you've never worked with something like this before, it, that, that's kind of a subjective idea, and hopefully a lot of people understand that, whether or not this is easy or not. Um, this was tested and exported from VirtualBox. I'm actually using VMware Player to work with these, and it worked just fine. I didn't have to do any kind of tweaking or modifying. It just went straight to it. So there's your download links right there. Grab one of those, download, follow along, have a good time. All right, so the first thing I needed to do was to understand this a little bit better is I've already run my Nmap scans. So typically what I'll do is an all port scan. So we'll can all ports, cat that out just to find out what ports are running, right? And that way I can kind of narrow my focus down a little bit. And I've got a ton of stuff. It actually had a lot of ports open. I'm like, wow, I'm used to like two, maybe three ports. Every now and then you see a handful of four or five, but this is a lot. This is six, seven, eight ports were open on this. And a lot of them were uh, HTTP, HTTPS. Uh, and then when I did a the deep scan, I kind of looked in further with Nmap. So cats, what was it? Nmap, deep scan. There we go. As I looked into it a little bit farther, I noticed, well, here's another HTTP running Python. Um, then there was port 80 is running Apache. Port 443 is running Apache. And what else was there? Oh, yeah, here's another one right here. 8086 is running InfluxDB on HTTP, right? So this had a lot of options for me. As I just kind of worked through my my way, I, what I like to do, especially when I find web pages like this, you know, it's, it's running some sort of HTTP business, uh, I run over there. And the uh, first one, right out of the gate, right? So I just typed in the IP address of the actual... And you'll see I'm in the logout page because uh, I was fooling around with it. But if I just go to the IP, it takes me to this login page. And I thought, okay, well, so it looks like a little brute force -y to me. I like brute force. That's it's not too difficult. You know, fire up Burp or Zap or something. Or maybe, you know, uh, build my own custom tool or whatever with Python. That takes a little bit of time. Um, but it didn't get anywhere. I got a couple of, of lists that I ran through. Nothing. And I thought, well, maybe it's SQL injection. You know, but I do have this like eyes of network product under GPL. So I know what it is. And I said, okay, well, let me just kind of fiddle around with that for a minute. Of course, one of my first things I'll do is run to search exploit, exploits. And I just did eyes of network like that. And right out of the gate, they had a, a handful of things that were possible. But we did see this auto discovery, target command execution. Of course, that says metasploit. But uh, a little bit more, and it would have the T on the end, letting me know I had a Metasploit uh, module that was available for this. And maybe that would be the best way to go because it's easy, right? It's a point click, you're done kind of thing. I say point click. You do need to know a few things, right? And again, if this is your first foray into Metasploit, 
uh, you could be like, well, I don't really know what to do. And that's, I thought, oh, this is a really good CTF for those of you who have just gotten started with Metasploit. You've maybe poked around a little bit with it. Maybe you've even done something with it. Now you need some other thing to test your skills with Metasploit if you've if you've gone down that road and you're just looking to get some more experience. So Drifting Blue 7 really did work out to be that way. So I'm going to just get Metasploit running, MSF console, to start Metasploit. And once that gets up and running, I'm going to start using those tried and true uh, functions for using Metasploit. So first thing I want to do is do a search for that module that I'm looking for. And this was called Eyes of network was the tool that um, I found online or on my target, right? Good news is here, this is what I liked about this one. It was pretty simple and straightforward, which was there was there was one available module and I could just choose that. So use zero and from there I can do my options like so. So now that I got these options, there are a lot of options here, but if we're just paying attention and we see what's going on, it shouldn't be anything too crazy, right? So right out of the gate, you look for those things that which are required. Proxies is not required. Don't have a proxy anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Our hosts is required, and this is the target host, right? I can use the CIDR range or hosts uh, file with syntax that kind of gives that, or I can just give it the IP, right? So that, that's, that's really what I'm looking for. Um, for this. So I'm going to set that option. Let's do that. Set our hosts. And for me, it's pretty simple. It is 10.10.10.32 was the IP on my network that I'm running with. So it'll be different for you. You'll have to do what you've got going on for you. So I got that set. Go back to options again. Make sure that that is in there, which it does look like it is set. Now, the next thing that is required is our port and it is set to 443 and that's fine that's exactly where that is lying is if we go uh oh i guess we're there if we looked back at that mmap scan remember we saw port 443 was open if i go to just port 80 it redirects me to 443 okay if you get any kind of thing about the certificate not being signed or anything just accept the risk and continue that kind of stuff uh you know what you're doing right that's that's what's going on here now we've got this srv host and srv adder this is the eyes of the network server IP address, if different from the R host. It's not for me, so I can leave that alone. If it was, I would want to add that right there, but it's not. SRV host, this is the local host or network interface to listen on. This must mean address on the local machine or let. The easiest thing to do is to go with the 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 because then it'll listen on all um, available interfaces. Then we've got this SRV port, which is the local port, which is to listen on which is 8080, it's not being used, so that looks like it's good. And those were all the yes options. I got one more, which is the target URI, which is set to forward slash by default. And it looks good to go. Nothing is the base path. That's exactly where mine is. So if, if it was different, it was set somewhere else, I would have to make sure that path was set correctly and we'd be good. All right, let's see here, URI path. Um, this is not necessary, but I could change this to a specific place I wanna go for my exploit. I'm gonna go with the random one. All right, now, another thing that we do need to do, which is required, is set our options. So this is the payload. This is the actual, once it does the exploitation, and says, hey, now that I've got control of you and I want you to run stuff, this is what I want you to do. That's the payload, okay? So you can see that I'm using the default, which is Linux, x64 meterpreter reverse tcp which means i want to use a meterpreter reverse tcp shell i'm going to continue to stay inside of that metasploit ecosystem and uh, that's how i'm going to gain access and grab shells and and send commands and things of that nature okay so but i do need to set the option of l host and so we'll do that so set l host and that's going to be my ip address my ip address is 10 10 10 30. At least I think it is. I can always check that IP adder. And I do see that. Yeah, right there. 10, 10, 10, 30. All right. Uh, I have config would also be another way to check that. I have config. You can see that. Bam, right there. Okay. So now that we've got all our options, I'll just check that. Make sure all those options are set. I do see the right interface. Everything is rocking. Here's the exploit target. So if there were multiple targets, you might want to change that. But this only has one. It's a Linux x86 target. 
or um, I'm sorry, X64, 64 bit target that is. And now I can just run one of two commands, either run or exploit if we want to be super leets, which you know we do. I'm going to type exploit. All right, type exploit. And it's going. It looks like things are happening. It's sending the stage. Oh, and this is exactly what we want to see. Meterpreter session one is open. And it looks like we're good. And if I type in shell, it says channel one is created. And I, I think we're there. ID. Oh, look, I am root. This was a super easy one. But if, like I said, if you're new to using something like Metasploit, this is a really good challenge for you to, to come in and play with and make sure that, oh, yeah, if you were following me along, you're like, oh, I'm not really sure on what should I do. How did I find this? How would I work with this? What do I do once I get a interpreter session open? How do I do that? Well, now you can understand. Now that I'm I'm shelled up, I can throw Python commands at. So Python, was it uh, dash C import PTY, PTY dot spawn. This is just some house cleaning stuff to make it look a little. And I'm just going to spawn a bash shell using Python just to kind of pretty things up. And you notice now I've got this nice bash 4-2 kind of thing going on. When I do ID or who am I, you can see I'm root. I can CD slash root, do an LS. I've got a flag dot text. I can cat flag dot text. And I get the cool flag. Yay, go us. But all that was doable. And when I'm done, just exit out. That closes that Python shell that I created. This will close the interpreter shell. And I'm happy as a clam, right? I can check sessions to see if I still have one. Do a sessions dash I. You'll notice there are no ID. Uh, I just do sessions. I think that's, yeah. So looks like we're done. Shell, right? Yeah. So channel two was created. ID, I'm back in. So you want to get in and out. Sessions usually, I think it's, there's a listing function. What is it? Uh, I'll exit out of here. And um, if you are if you ever get stuck, right, just help. And it'll show you what you can do and kind of give you some, some helps with this stuff. I was looking for anything around that session stuff which I don't see, which is funny. There it is. Since sessions quickly switch to another session, I think you can do like help sessions. Again, kind of helping you out. So help sessions, or it's going to be sessions help. Yeah, uh, ses sessions help. Now yeah, it doesn't like that. But sessions-i usually does uh, sessions-l. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. But... There you go. If you need another one, just hit shell. You're good to go, and you can square away. I'm, i got to remember. It just goes to show you that you don't remember everything all the time, which is why Google is our friend. I also like to create a lot of uh, help files for myself. When How do I do that again? This would be a really good one for that. Like I need to go in there, figure out oh, if I wanted to list my sessions, what did I do? Maybe I need more than one before it actually shows it, or maybe I need to exit out of this interpreter and then do sessions dash I, I don't know, no active session. So I've actually killed that session, but there you go. Just giving some more interaction and giving you some, some, something to play with it, some practical way in which you can kind of fool around uh, with using Metasploit. So I hope you like that. I thought, I thought it was cool. So if you've, if you're new to Metasploit or if you've messed with just a little bit and you wanted to, a little something that you can test those skills against and see if it works and not just the old tried and true like um, metasploitable things of that nature uh, but an actual CTF that it works with there you go drifting blues available at Vulnhub this was number seven so if you're looking for that in the list you know exactly which one to look for and don't forget I'll put the link down below for you in the description so that you can easily go find that download and uh, get this rocking in your own environment. Hope you like this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and comment, please, and thank you. That said, thanks, and we'll see you next time.